So, one of my favorite, most exciting topics I'm doing today, and I'll be doing a bit in the next little while leading up to our major event that we're going to be having on the 3rd and 4th of March over in WA for those who are interested, which is something that I've had on my heart to do for a very, very long time. And I'll share more about it towards the end. I remember years ago going along to a city type of event, works um, with a with a master, Raymond Grace, and spent three days. And I walked out a completely different man. I've never forgotten that event. And, and I went again, and this time I took my sons, and still to this day, they never forgot that event. So one of my life passions and loves this, and you'll hear it probably as I talk about this. Who, who gets very fascinated and excited about anything to do with this stuff, about energy and the ability to transform energy and <laughs> anything around this? Like it just gets your, your juices going, really gets them going. It's one of these things I could talk for hours and hours and hours on this, but today I'm just going to have to keep it very, very to the point um, as this introduction, ready for our event. So how to activate the city powers without becoming a monk, which is good for all of us. So I'm certainly not in any way saying, and I want to make this very clear because I do use these people. I use doctors because at the end of the day, I may be a spiritual teacher, I may work as in, in city powers, but I'm in a human experience living in a human body. And sometimes I've got to be reminded of that. But the doctors, specialists, chiropractors, physios, naturopaths all play their wonderful parts in reminding us to stay in our human body, yoga, Pilates, all this kind of stuff. So most sacred writings I've read, even the best cities, have always said the importance of, of using these, especially in your evolution. Because really, there does come a time for some of the great cities where you actually start to hit the point that as your Ketswan once told Yogananda, he said that the early the the, the 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 person early involved in their journey um looks at everything from the body point of view. And the early starters look at things like vaccines, medicines, things like that. They then tend to progress to herbs, then they tend to go to diet, then they go to natural, then they go to mind to basically psychotherapy then he said then that people tend to go and realize that everything comes from the mind and it becomes all that mind mind body and then then the time comes to the real city where he realizes everything is spirit and is just a big dream of god and there's nothing you cannot change by energy and i can tell you now that there's literally nothing that you cannot transform by energy and the only thing that stops us from doing it is the is our unbelief as the masters have said just the fact that it's difficult to believe it because it's so profound as to what you're actually able to do. It becomes really, really hard to do this. And there's various things that the cities actually do know and live their lives by. And so, and, and everything from our belief systems, how we live our life. And ultimately, so much of what I call the city teaching is really limited in the sense it, it often gets a bit weird, as I would describe it. You know, it starts off kind of getting people excited and it gets you into going into ashrams and things like that. But the exciting thing is it's actually got nothing to do that. Um, really, as Yahiri Mahasaya told his disciples and was the one in India who broke open the idea that you have to be in an ashram or renounce society. And I grew up in the belief that you had to renounce society to do it. And I did for a while. And it left me in a constant state of conflict, you know, um, so to speak. Like I literally was in a constant, constant state of conflict on this because I genuinely like there was this young hunger in me to do business, to do normal stuff. But at times I'd feel guilty using my city powers to actually do that. And so I would end up then going through these kind of almost bipolar phases in my life where one minute, I would be all out with business and finance. Then I'd be all out with something else. Then I would be all out and I'd renounce everything and go into a mountain for a time. I'm just curious, am I the only one here or can some of you relate to me with this? Like actually genuinely relate to me and have had this same kind of challenge in your life? Or am I the only one? If you, if you have raised your hands, okay, good. So it's not just me. So let's get on with this because I'm going to be, it'll go for about 45 minutes to an hour maximum today. Um, 
So including the Q&A. So I wanted to keep it short and to the point. So we're going to be having a little bit of a look at everything around the city powers, and it's really just a bit of an intro, and I'll be covering this again next week to really show you why um, this is this is the future of energy work and where I see we're moving into in the next 50 years. We're going to start seeing more and more and more of this and getting this kind of stuff happening. We're going to be doing some online programs, but the face-to-face -face workshop is where the real fun is going to be happening. So like I said, very excited about this and looking forward to seeing it happen. So we're gonna be learning about how they've been proven to use scientifically. There is a relationship between what the yogis teach and science, um, solving the, the dormant powers of in you. The fact that you're on this webinar and have a hunger means you probably have these powers in you. I have done a lot of studies and been in mystery schools and there's a belief that there is certain soul or DNA types. And those who are what's called indigos, and I don't know if any of you heard that expression, indigo um, people or children have a born with an innate awakening sense where your chakras and your DNA is more awakened than others and it hungers towards. So whereas others um, are what's called more a just a normal earthly kind of being. Anyone ever heard of that? Like the, indi the concept of the indigo or the concept of... Um, people who are born that way, especially since 2000. There's, there, and in the keys of Enoch, they talk a lot about this. And so this message is very much to indigos and people who are what's called indigos, angelic humans, or people who have got what's called a particular hunger towards you. And you know you're one because something in you resonates, not from an ego perspective. If it's an ego, like, oh, yeah, man, I'm just this cool indigo. No, no, there's just like, yeah. And indigos want to serve. They want to do something. They want their life to have meaning, to make a profound difference in the life of other people. I have found probably in the last six months, if anything, I've gone from where there was that part of me that, yes, I'd, I've always wanted to serve with this, but a part of where I wanted to be in the front line to where I've changed. I'm more interested in making a profound difference at the back and building something that will last a long, a long beyond my lifetime, um, regardless of how much recognition I get just for the pure joy of this. The other thing too is using these powers in a practical way rather than just what I call a silly way where you just kind of have this kind of weird stuff. I mean, the true cities of the world today, many of them you never guess they were, and they can do extraordinary miracles in a very normal daily life and in a very grounded way. And then I'm gonna be introducing you to a city activation um, introduction code clearing using the secrets of the Alexandrian Mystery School for Third Eye pineal activation. So who here is ready for that today? And ready to kind of get a little bit of a kick, a kick start and then jump. Okay, so you've probably seen this slide one million times and you're gonna see it another one million times um, for sure. And Raymond, of course, we're looking at having him come and do a webinar next week, all things equal, but everything is energy and it can be transformed. And of course, this is what Jesus said. It's what just about every city has said in their own words, everything. And not just the city say this now, not just uh, energy workers, but science says this too. Um, everything that you see as solid is actually is actually liquid or matter, and everything that's liquid or matter is solid. It's all how you see it. And every city who's been asked how they could do things like levitate, um, there was a Buddhist monk who was literally hovering in the air. Dr. Adrian Clark, who was researching, said, how do you do that? And he goes, how do I do what? Hover in the air. He said, what you see is air. He said, what I see in here is a solid block. And that was a secret. In other words, he has act activated his consciousness to the point where he could change form of energy. The One of the one of Alberto Vololo's mentors, who's a shaman in the Amazon, who could actually shapeshift and turn into birds, into eagles in front of him, he said, how do, how do you do that? She said, well, you see birds and eagles and label them. I just see everything as one energy and I can just choose the form which I take the energy to express. I mean, God, they make it sound so simple, don't they? Um, but literally, I found that, it's, and think of it a little bit like learning to do gym. You just got to add layers on. And if you're early in your city journey, you just build up on it. But pretty much there's really not much you can't do um, when you learn this kind of stuff. And that's why... I want to do a two-day workshop where it's be Friday night dinner, two-day workshop to really tap in because 
Raymond's workshop, that was when we saw some of our great miracles when you're in a room and you're tapping in and mastering this. So you may have heard of him before and don't understand him properly and haven't activated him within yourself. And you certainly don't want to go live in the Himalayas, become a monk, you know, shave your head, sing Kumbaya and wear orange and, you know, have wild orgies and eat vegan food. Now, maybe the wild orgies might be good, but apart from that, um, everything else probably doesn't appeal to you too much. Except for a joke, my very sick sense of humor. So, okay. So this is kind of sound like you a little bit. Um, you've had flashes of intuition that were accurate, but you can't consistently predict the future. You're not using your powers or precognition in your daily life because you just don't fully trust it. Like you might be using it, but not fully. You haven't actually seen the latest scientific trials and studies that prove it exists. And you want to activate it now instead of having to meditate or encounter an ascended master that blesses you, does the chant all of you, or get you to join an ashram and shave your head. So does it just if it sounds like you, raise your hand and just let us know. Okay, good. Quite a few of you. So not it's so a little bit about me. And I I have literally it's a side of me that people haven't seen as much of, or some people haven't, and in that many people, and really, I like to call myself Kung Fu Panda. Has anyone here seen Kung Fu Panda? And if you've got kids, you probably have. Just kind of let me know if you've seen Kung Fu Panda. If not, you probably should. Kung Fu Panda, um, in the third Kung Fu Panda, he, he meets an opponent he cannot beat. And the only way you can beat him is in the realm of the spirit, and he had to embrace all of his personalities. And there was a part where Kung Fu Panda said, I am so confused. He said, why? He goes, well, what am I? Am I a father? Am I a martial arts master? Am I a, a playful child? What am I? And what Kung Fu Panda learned was he's all of these. And really, in other words, I'm Warren a father. My kids see that in me. I'm Warren a lover for a girl who's married or dates me, you know, whoever's unfortunate to have to put up with me. Um, I'm Warren a son to my mother. I'm Warren the educational financial educator. I'm Warren the lawyer accountant. I'm Warren the spiritual teacher. And all these are me. And what's happening, in, and, and really more and more as time has gone on, I've realized that how this is where you'll be probably seeing a lot more of me in this space. Um, I spent most of my life more in the financial. And although I still plan to be in that, I plan to do a lot more of this because in the background, I've been doing this like for a long time. Over 30 years, I've been involved in Pentecostal um, churches since I was 16, um, seen miracles, seen people healed of like broken backs in front of my eyes, people with asthma so chronic, they were spending in and out of hospital instantly healed, um, just people of cancer just instantly getting healed. Like, we've seen all kinds of stuff in that. And that was what got me started, got me excited, was being involved in a church of a really great master who operated very profoundly in this. And he used to see things regularly, like cripples get instantly healed. Um, people experience instant miracles. And that gave me a hunger. And I was fortunate enough to train under him for a number of years. And he taught me how to use music to activate the powers and meditation and all kinds of stuff. Um, the So I founded many things in my life. I could, I've done financial education stuff mainly, so which I could put a whole lot of them here. But rather do that, I just mentioned here the awakening within which is basically very much about teaching you to activate DNA, learn manifestation, clear your blocks, activate your city potential. And City Awakening is our church or religion that's really after the heart of Neville Goddard or Catherine Ponder. It's an esoteric integrated religion to kind of bring an inclusive way of spirituality to help people prosper and really bring a new breed of religion. I've been to numerous mystery schools, spent my life hunting these things out and really going into these things and making this my passion and mission. And honestly, these powers have changed my life. And I'll share a little bit more today. I transformed my mental health in the last six months. I was having unbelievable stresses last year, had had and health issues hit me. And I'll share some of them and completely fix myself, like completely um, in record time using a lot of this sort of stuff. So just to go this really some simple touching base, we are always manifesting in our life because when we're speaking 
And one thing the cities know is that your mouth and your mind is incredibly powerful. And I can remember a brilliant um, healer who I worked with in Perth, who has from extra who actually his wife operated as a city. She was able to um, bend spoons and the stuff in the matrix. And so when I was having constant health problems and I lost 10 kilos in five weeks, I had I was having panic attacks every day. Um, extraordinarily, like in an absolute mess, all my trauma coming up. I can remember he said to me, the problem is when you've got great powers, Warren, and then you start falling into a negative frame of mind, you start manifesting in reverse. And that's what you seem to be doing to yourself. And that kind of snapped me because I realized I've been doing that for a couple of months. He said, so the way you're going, he said, you're going to manifest yourself into a nightmare. And I said, well, I already have. So he said, I suggest you consider what I'm saying and gaining, regaining control of your mind through the breath and other things. And I did that. And I can remember having people tell me it will take you about six months to put the weight back on. I said, no, it won't. It will take me six weeks. And I did six weeks. I put it all back on and I got my weight straight back and was able to pretty much reverse everything around. Um, was able to even do things like I, I went on a, on a high anxiety medication but I made a bit of a deal with myself that if I could turn that medication into a herb, I would take it. So I, I did some work on it, took it down to a herbalist who tested it on a machine. And normally medication comes out very negative and toxic. He said, whatever the heck you've done to it, he said, you've turned this into a herb because it's actually acting in you like a herb. And so I took that and proceeded to use a few other things and then went off at no withdrawal symptoms, nothing. So these powers can literally change your life. And it's why I'm so passionate about it, because it can give you better quality of life and help you activate more and access things that you could do more and enjoy your human experience. I mean, have fun. I mean, I started having fun. I mean, I started getting some really supposedly not great medication and taking them and using these. And again, it was showing it was perfectly fine with me. So your mouth speaks, your body listens. Nothing exists until it's observed or labeled. And that's why you've got to be so careful what you're saying and thinking and speaking, especially about everything. They found that even if you speak over your wife, your husband, negative things, or like, oh man, they're always so emotional. You're actually projecting that in what's called the city skill of telepsychics, where you can actually mentally project energies into someone. And this is how the dark arts work, for example. They, they are, are great cities or... For those who watch Star Wars, they're like Siths, you know, dark arts, sorcerers or lords who can use the powers in a negative way and manipulate people's consciousness. Stuart Swerdlow, um, in, who teaches that he came out, of, when he came out of CIA, he would be involved in doing um, car accidents and projecting that into people they wanted to get rid of using the power of the dark arts. So the, it's you got to be very mindful what you're projecting over your business, over your body, over your health, over your relationships, over what's around you, over the world. Um, how many people right now are getting caught up with the cost of living, the crisis, the absolute fucked up that's going on in the world? And I love what Catherine Ponder says in her book, The Millionaires of Genesis. She says, whenever I have a huge rise of cost of living or price increases, I always see it as an opportunity from God or from the universe to raise my financial consciousness. Just raise your hand if you like that. She said, I see it as an opportunity to raise my financial consciousness. She goes, I don't care if a property costs me 5 million or 100,000. That's nothing for the universe. It's just a belief system as to what we believe. And it's very important to realize that, that you want to start labeling things and even what's going on in the world, even what's being, being, being happening. I've had people go on at me about electric cars are going to do this. And they said, what do you think? I'm like, well, I said, Motorola phones were a nightmare when they first came out. But 10 years later, they sorted out. I said, right now, it's a new technology. I'm sure they'll sort it out. And they were kind of like, oh, but this, this. I'm like, well, I said, the reality is, I said, everything we do is controlled and we're living by artificial intelligence. I said, we can choose and focus on it or we can kind of change our perspective and see ourselves as sovereign beyond it. And his teachings in the Bible, um, one of the greatest books for esoteric mystery secrets I found, whereas I told someone, if you really wanted to learn how to get through COVID unscathed and be unvaccinated and pay minimal taxes legally, 
just read the Bible and read what Jesus taught because he pretty much taught me and I just copied him during COVID. So as an example, so nothing exists until observed or labeled because everything is energy and we imprint the energy with what we want it to be. It's that simple. So if we label something as bad, then in our mind it's bad. I have just been going through a humbling transformation in the last six months. Things that I used to say, which I realized at the end of the day was my perceptions. It was my projections. And I'm finding things like lately, I'm actually having the joy. I'm eating what I fucking want. Now, for those of you, when you go on a spiritual journey, you often end up going on a really health kick. And I did, you know, I fasted, I've gone on juices. These days I eat like so much bread and I love it. I, ha I had some chocolate last night, some really delicious milk chocolate. I eating burgers like lots, steaks. And when I'm getting checked up on, I'm like getting in better and better health because I'm creating that. I can eat what I want. My body can self-correct. That's my newest. My body can self-direct. So when I was having digestion problems, I'm like, well, and I was given go and buy this probiotic, go and buy that. And I thought, I just can't be fucked. Excuse the French. So, so as far as I'm concerned, my body can and will self-correct. And it did. And then next minute, a client just sends me a whole lot of um, isogenic shakes as a gift and says, use these. And I took them. And that's what happened. I just manifested them. So the point I'm saying is, who likes that belief? Who would rather have that belief that I, my body can self-correct? Who wants to take on that as your belief? Rather than you've got to go spend a fortune on this, that, and everything. Now, sometimes the universe goes, okay, go and do this and go and do that. Like I was about to go and do a big expensive um, treatment on something and I thought, you know what? Screw it. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to imprint that my body can do it and I'll do it. And my energy's just been going up and up and up. And honestly, the issue I've got right now was I actually had a talk with my mentor who told me, your issue is you sorted out your life so well, you're getting bored. So now you're scrolling on social media, getting bored, and, and, and you're starting to create problems for yourself to keep yourself occupied. So I suggest you clog up your calendar, work your ass off, and get busy again. Otherwise, you're going to start creating dramas just to alleviate boredom. And I was like, oh. So I quickly got myself busy. I worked my ass like a dog this week, and I've noticed that all my dramas have gone out of my life. Who likes that for an idea? In other words, use your city powers for good because you're always manifesting. Every moment, every hour, every second of the day, you are manifesting. And you are activating powers one way or the other. So these are some of the scientific conclusions that the cities know and have known for centuries and science is just starting to work this out and going, hey, oh my gosh, we've worked out it's like space and time is an illusion. And I imagine Jesus and Buddha and I would be going, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, we worked that out like a couple of thousand years before you guys, but no matter. It's good that you finally got to it. Um, things don't exist until observed. And there's still scientists today who are still questioning quantum physics, but you're always going to get the naysayers. Um, quantum physics have now worked out like the yogis that consciousness is before matter. Um, material physicists say, oh, well, you know, this creates consciousness, whereas the the city or the quantum physicist says, no, 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 this is a glass and this is water because that's how we see, perceive, and we believe it. And that's what created it. And that's what Jesus said, hey, if I want to create this into wine for a booze up, I can do so, and he did. That's why one of my favourite courses that I run, which a few people have said that to me, they loved it, was my course, Jesus the Badass. And I said, you know, I said, who's interested today that Jesus beat up the bankers? He was a rebel. He showed you how to legally get a tax. He showed you how to manifest money to pay tax office. He stood up to his Roman authorities. He he turned water into, into wine for a big booze up. He hung out with prostitutes and strippers. And he basically um, created a whole lot of food for a big feast. Now, I don't know about you, but that sounds like a city. He wasn't sitting there in an ashtray with a shaving head. And that's kind of why they found him hard to deal with, because he was just a really normal kind of a bloke who lived a normal life. And, of course, the church has done everything to depict him as this love and light guy who's a bit of a ukulele playing guy with a beard um, who's singing stuff. But he actually was a real badass. So things or objects aren't localized. They spread as one big hologram. So these are the things. And religion aligns with the science behind them. And... This is one of the greatest secrets of the city is that if anyone says to the mountains, throw yourself into this sea um, and does not doubt it. Um, it's very interesting as an aside that many of the newer Bibles since 1975, when they changed the translation committees and they kind of wanted to water down people's powers, 
change all of this. So rather than saying have the faith of God, as Jesus originally said, in other words, step into your God-like authority, they change it to have faith in God. In other words, have faith in an external God or church, whereas Jesus didn't say that. He said the kingdom of heaven is in you and have the faith of God. In other words, step into the God authority and become a badass and just believe it and claim it in the now. And he also said faith is the, is a, is the evidence of things that are not that are not seen, the substance of what's the intangible realm, because we're living in a formless realm of energy that we can create into whatever we want to and imprint that into something. So Jesus says you'll never manifest anything but you don't believe you already have. So if you believe that you've already got the flu, you'll probably get it. Um, if you believe you have wealth and abundance and things like that, you'll you'll manifest it. If you think that one day you're going to have you know money, then that one day will never actually quite happen, you know. Um, so it's really really good. So yeah, I like that Ash about teaching it to your dog. <laughs> so teaching physics to your dog. I like this quote from Einstein. Your imagination is a sneak preview of what's going to happen next. So if you're expecting drones to come and circle and, you know, do cameras up your ass um, for artificial intelligence to take over your life, for you to lose your jobs, for the world to be fucked up, then yeah, it's a very good chance that even if it doesn't happen, you will make sure you see it that way and find reasons to do it that way. So I would suggest take control of your imaginations. So what are we meaning by city powers? Look, there's many different things, but the slant I'm looking at today, the I mentioned Jesus in the Bible. Now I'm going to go into a bit of a Hindu event just to show that we're an integrated, inclusive group, which we are. To me, I think every religion is like part of an elephant. It is, it is showing you a part of God in a powerful way, and, you, and ultimately they're going to work this out and start working together. So the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali describes you sipping out normal mental powers and a means for obtaining them. So exceptionally precise means, and the cities could do extraordinary concentration. They could do extraordinary miracles. I mean, Yuketswa, they put him in prison and they found him sitting on the roof and every night they realised he was levitating out of his cell and just dissolving through it. Yuketswa caused his disciple Yogananda to lose 50, kilo, 50 pounds in an hour because he was overweight, and he asked to, and he asked him to do it for him. Um, I met a city in Raymond Grace's workshop who hasn't eaten for 25 years, Jeffrey Jones, um, and who literally in one month went from being $800,000 in debt about to go bankrupt, where not only was it paid, but he became financially free. But he said, well, if I can not eat for this and everything's energy, I can energetically transmit my finances instantly. Sri Sai Baba could make gold manifest in his hand right in front of you as you'd watch him. Um, there are certain cities today who can do that. They can manifest material abundance instantly, <clears throat> like no delay. I'm still in the point where I'm, I'm still operating where there's a delay and there's a time. But I am going like, what's my next step to do that for myself, where you can actually manifest it instantly, like really, really fast. <clears throat> so... Patanjali talks about the cities are obtained after mastery of the last three steps of the Eightfold Path to enlightenment. The ability to sustain concentration, meditation, and samadhi. And samadhi is a kind of state of nothingness, bliss, where you're just kind of completely, you've moved out. Because suffering is only because you're attached to something is pain or believe it to be pain. I was taught in a course recently that um, basically... Meditation, you know, ex and acceptance plus pain just equals pain. But you don't see it as suffering. You just see it for what it is. <laughs> Meditation plus non-acceptance plus pain equals suffering. And I thought that's a good way of putting it. <laughs> so the idea of sanity doesn't mean you have this perfect life all the time. <clears throat> it just means that no matter what's going on, you're just at peace. You're content. You've learned to move beyond attachment. You've, you know... If you're, if you're going through something, you're going through something. Have I got a perfect state of my life? At, uh, not at this current moment. Uh, and I'm sure if I did, I mean, yeah, while I'm in a human experience, there's a good chance that I'm going to have things to deal with. I've got a particular thing that right now I've already spoken is healed. I know it's healed, but it's still playing out in my physical realm. And it's annoying, but I'm like, okay, everything else is fixed. Now this one last thing has to get fixed. 
And as I'm doing it, I'm saying, what's the benefit of it? And the benefit I'm finding is it's helping me concentrate more to stay focused on things. So sustained means a deeply absorbed, highly focused, as opposed to obsessive mental chattering. The good thing is there's many ways to help you in the interim. There's things like, I mean, in an early stage, for example, as I learned in a, in a mental health stress management course, medication can have its part. If you're having extreme acute stress and nothing else is solving it, to temporarily settle things down while you're dealing through it and then to gradually come off it and get released from it. And that's become the new path to mental health. But another way is these things like new CBD gummies, for example, which can help really quieten the mind and settle the thoughts down. Um, microdosing in mushrooms, neurofeedback. There's so many different things you can use in the physical to help you get to that point as you're improving your mental focus and learning to allow your thoughts to dissolve. And rather than being caught up in our thoughts, we just start to let our thoughts play out and pass through because they process. Now, when I start to feel distressed or anxious, I just go straight away, <clears throat> relax. In fact, my newest thing, I just stare at a tree. That's all I do. And eventually I phase out. And then a little while later, I'm like, oh, I'm fine now because the trees absorb the energies, as an example. So cities are really about concentration. I remember at Raymond, when I was at Raymond's um, mystery school workshop, I got to the point where my concentration was so sharp, I was doing instant miracles very easily. I remember my son had a really bad eye and I just instantly fixed it for him um, in right in front of everyone. Like his eye just went, Zhoom. a lady had a goiter on her throat, Zhoom, went straight down. I had a severely injured knee. I fixed it in about one hour, just said it was healed and did it. But then, and then I noticed I could take any water from any tap, any food from anywhere, no matter how bad it was, <clears throat> energetically work on it, and then I'd be fine. I I can remember when my homeopath was telling me how many people getting shedding from the vaccine, um, from being intimate with people who'd been vaccinated with the COVID jab. I said, well, I've been intimate with people who've been vaccinated with the COVID jab, and I guarantee you I won't have shedding. And he goes, why is that? I said, because I don't allow that in my energy field. I said, it neutralizes when it comes in. And he tested me. He goes, yeah, you've had no effects of shedding at all. I said, well, I didn't expect it. And it's all about the, the concentration. It's all about the belief. And it's about staying adherent and faithful to that belief. And you always start by <clears throat> 10 seconds or then one, one thing or to 10 breaths, then to 20 breaths, then to 50 breaths. And generally, for example, if you're doing four to five breaths a minute, which is a really good thing for meditation, 15 minutes is 75 breaths. And at the very least, that's just a starting point to be able to exercise those powers to be able to do that. I'm, I'm exercising my powers right now by doing things that are really uncomfortable. I'm naturally not a very good manager. And it's a bit of a joke because I'm a creative person. So right now, I'm doing the exact opposite to what I normally do. I'm actually mastering management and planning. I'm studying it. I'm working on planning and working more on the business and doing a lot of administrative stuff and back-end stuff. Um, now, all stuff that's uncomfortable for me. First four weeks, I was miserable, I'll be honest. But I've noticed now I'm starting to enjoy it and I'm seeing the difference in my life, in my business, in my finances and everything, in the stability that I'm attracting into my life my ability to access the city powers at will. So sometimes you go a different path. That was my sense. I've gone into a path of management, learning trading with cryptos and stuff that naturally, for someone who's a bit ADHD prone like me, and for I'm going to master that and get my concentration absolutely immaculate. So um, it's very crude, for example, um, Samyana, which is that state of bliss or complete quietness of the mind. And quietness doesn't mean... And the worst thing you can do in a quietness of a mind is to try and force your mind to relax because you'll get more stress. Just observe the thoughts going in and out. And, and then before you know it, relaxation and rest will find you and you'll be in this state of peace. And those of you who do this would know what I mean. And raise your hand if you know what I mean. Meditate, rest finds you. Quietness of mind just finds you as you do it. And the more you do it, it happens more naturally. Like yoga. In yoga, when you do yoga, you do what's called sabhasana, where you lie down at the end and that, takes you into that state where things just dissolve. Um, so as an example, if you focus on another person, one becomes the other person. So one is telepathy, where you can mentally project thoughts. 
my partner, the one who passed away, she had the gift of telepathy. She could read people's thoughts exactly. And when she'd tell me that, I'd just laugh. I'd say, what am I thinking? And she'd tell me, I'd be in shock. I'm like, she could read thoughts of people exactly. So that's a gift of what's called telepathy. I can do it to a degree, but she could exactly read thoughts. Um, <clears throat> knowledge of the past, present and future, clairvoyance. My son, William, who some of you worked with, he has the gift of clairvoyance. He can read people's past lives like, like, like he can deceive him with people. He can see your energy feel like I can see you and you can see me right now. He has a genuine gift of what's called clairvoyance, you know? Um, so basically, clairvoyance is actually defined as a thing of perceiving things or events in the future beyond normal sensory contact, so to speak. So there's various, I'm going to be doing this in two parts because there's so much to this thing. I'm going to be covering, continuing on next week. So the day I'm just getting started with this, um, on these powers. Um, and so the knowledge of the past presence. So the knowledge of the means of sounds from all being resulting from Samyana, knowing as clear audience, for example, on the third ear. <clears throat> so it's the ability to kind of hear things, so to speak. So when we're talking about this thing called clear audience, what we're talking about is the ability to hear in a paranormal manner. So you can just kind of... Um, <clears throat> You can just hear things, you can sense things, often hear sounds or hear angels. And I, I used to hear angelic music. It used to happen to me sometimes, not very often, but it happened to me. And you would just hear music that wasn't actually there. Um, so you can actually moderate experience, give feedback and all that kind of stuff. So that's just an example of that. Patanji talks about the knowledge of previous births. Um, yeah, my son can do that, and he often goes through. I notice at times when I'm really focused, I can do that. I, when my son and I would sit down together, we could literally clearly see our past lives together, like clearly. And I actually said to him, "You and I were actually trained in a city school in the Himalayas, and I saw us together, what we were doing, and the roles we were playing, I even saw the rankings, the roles, and everything in how it was working." Because we have these things called soul groups where we tend to re-attract in this lifetime back in with similar people, similar ones. So I'll guarantee you, if any, any of you are really drawn to my teaching at some stage in previous lives, we've kind of been linked and you've learned from me. Just raise your hand or say yes if you know that. Like you're really drawn to my teaching and drawn to what I'm teaching you and you soak it in. I'm just curious. Because if you are, then there's all you can almost bet your bottom dollar <clears throat> that you've been involved with me in past lives. And if you tap in at some stage into these things, you're going to probably get senses or impressions. Um, and it's happened once when I was teaching a group of clients a few years ago. And it was extraordinary. They all started seeing visions and all of them saw we're in a school together and I was their teacher. I remember one guy who was teaching me in a mystery school. I had a, but we were having a really bad clash and I actually had this clear vision. And I saw us in a mystery school. He was my master and my teacher. And then he did the wrong thing by me. And so we had to clear it in this lifetime. So there's so much this kind of stuff. So telepathy is another one where, as I said, where you project the thoughts, where you can read and sense other people's minds. Um, disappearance of the body from view. Jesus could do this. It talks about Jesus when he was being hunted by people who wanted to kill him. He just disappeared in front of them and walked straight past them. He went invisible. Um, so the ability to see auric fields, like my son William has got that gift. I I can tap into that, but he just has it. He's had to learn to shut it off because he can do it very easily, see Auric Fields. And um, the other gift that, that Patanjali talks about, the foreknowledge of birth, harm, or death, um, just this instinct of being able to do things, being able to get dreams, to be able to um, process things and stuff like that. So Samyana, for example, it's like the... Various things, for those of you who don't know, it, it's the three limbs of what's called Raja Yoga, so to speak, the binding and holding together. Um, so basically, the best way to think of it, it's a simultaneous um, practice and experience of complete focus or concentration, meditation or contemplation, or like union. So it's again, it's just a more kind of cool word, so I can look cool. Uh, not, I'm joking, but. Yeah, in other words, for focus, meditation, concentration, and things like that. Um, 
So that's what Samyana is. So loving kindness from Samyana, this may be interpreted as an intentional feel like psychokinesis, introducing similar feelings in each other. That's another one, um, the ability to do that. Um, extraordinary physical strength. The Bible talks about some dude called Samson who could do extraordinary strengths and tap into that. Um, some martial arts people can do this. They've tapped into this stuff. Um, how cities can learn to fly or levitate is that they've learned to lighten themselves or made themselves heavy. Jesus was able to lighten himself, and that's why he could walk on water, because he saw the water as solid and saw himself as air. And that's basically what they teach in the mystery schools. So <clears throat> remote viewing, as some of you have learned with me before, um, I use remote viewing on the cryptocurrency markets and on markets every now and again and get insight. And I've made money by doing that, um, <clears throat> where we tune in on into the market and get a sneak preview. So remote viewing is a very is a, is a very powerful thing. I also do what's called extended remote viewing. I, I actually remote viewed the vaccine like two years before it happened. I knew it was coming. I was able to see a whole lot of things that were coming in the earth um right back in 2018 and 19 by remote viewing and and i was telling people back then i've recently been doing some remote viewing and again been starting to see events that are coming and what's lining up before and things like that and it's quite interesting what i've been noticing so um you can start to see things in advance so knowledge of the outer universe um so this is another one. There's planetary subtle bodies and the human subtle bodies. Um, the Someone said about remote viewing the genocide in Palestine. I mean, you could in principle. I don't have any desire to do that, but if I wanted to, I could. Um, I've got my own views on that, but I won't kind of get caught up in that now. But yeah, look, a lot of this is just distractions. And if you read the Keys of Enoch, for example, that would all this stuff in Palestine that was prophesied and I was told it out in the 1980s by a really great city that this was going to happen in the Middle East. So, um, no, and it's all part of cleaning up and preparing for next stages. So knowledge of the inner universe, um, knowledge of the composition and coordination of bodily energies, which results in self-healing. So again, this is a bit of a sneak preview today. Next week, we're going to go a bit more into specific practical looking at this stuff. <laughs> um, liberation from hunger and thirst. There's been cities you haven't eaten for many years. One of them that I've mentioned. There's even been cities who've gone about water. Moses went for 40 days about water, as did Jesus. And there've been cities who've gone for like 40, 50, 60 days of no water as well. So exceptional stability. They say that the root of the tongue against the um, roof of the mouth, for example, that can activate you know, certain stability, calming, and health. So I do that pretty regularly in my breathing. Um, visions of higher beings, I definitely can activate that one, where that's when your crown chakra starts to activate, as well as your third eye, and you start to be able to see that, and things like that. So these are all different things. The influencing of others to transmit spiritual energy. Um, so... One of the things, too, is that in the presence of one firmly established and non-violence, all hostility cease. That's why with Gandhi, it was said so extraordinary what he was able to do because of, of where he was at. And I've noticed when you go into a place of peace and you really are in that internal peace, there was an actual true case happened in America in a mental institution of a, of a doctor who was sent to a mental institution. And he actually, every mental patient that came to saw him he looked to where their energies were resonant in him and he and he transmuted the energies and absorbed them. Within two years, all of the patients were, 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 were cleared up and he shut and they shut down the hospital. I was told about this when I was in Vegas. It was an extraordinary situation of a very advanced city doctor who was able to do this. So if you're in a situation, for example, at home where you've got hostilities, you just shift your energy. I used to always say, Oh, I just can't be around my mum because of her energy. In the end, I realized, well, she's just reflecting something I've got to deal with. So I started to shift my own energy. It didn't mean that I, and I noticed that she changed as I changed. And as I changed around my, around myself, people around me started to change. And I realized that I was a walking, living beacon that influenced everyone in the vicinity. In the Bible, it talks about the ark of God, the holy energy portal, 
that when it, every, anywhere it was, it would activate blessing, prosperity, and wealth. And I remember hearing a, a city called Al Fury years ago talking about how he would walk in a restaurant and just start speaking blessing because he would say, I am the ark of God. I am, a, I am a living, walking blessing of prosperity. And he would walk into restaurants that were struggling and he would speak that over the restaurant and within two weeks they'd be prospering. So literally you can become a beacon of light as a city and bring prosperity. You can become a neutralizer of vaccine side effects in people. I've done that with people. I've seen people heal by doing this. You can actually neutralize that with the vaccine because the vaccine is just an energy, you know? I even said to someone, I can tell you now, if I'd got the vaccine, it would have had no effect on me I would because I would have neutralized it. I just didn't want to take it. But I said, I don't have the slightest doubt. So, because all these things are actually just purely energies. So, levitation... That's what I mentioned, as Dr. Clark said, the Buddhist monks who taught meditate levitation said, you just got to realize that your body is air and see that the, and see the air as a block. So in other words, you realize that our body is just air and water. And so it's actually lighter than gravity. So the, another one, digestive ability. I can remember healing myself of food poisoning. I got severe food poisoning in Singapore and I was literally diarrheaing. I was in cramping agony and I had no access to any been to settle it down so i thought okay let's use the city powers to do this and i went in there i bought in pyramids and various energy portals into my body i shifted the energy three minutes later my digestion went back to normal i was told a few months ago i had major digestive problems for my mental health and i needed to go in all kinds of stuff i did for a bit made no difference so i just started using the the powers again and and, and re reclaiming the belief that my body can self-direct. I've noticed now my digestion has pretty much gone to normal. And I've had a sense to do apple cider vinegar, and I've enjoyed doing it. But you can do that. So there's a lot of things that you can actually do, and there's a lot more which I'll be covering over next week. So a last one I'll mention here before we just do a couple more examples and do a clearing, by location. <clears throat> Yeah, that's why many of the cities could do this. They could appear in more than one location at the same time. They would realize that as God, because we all are, can step into the faith of God, that means we have the ability to bilocate. If you don't believe me, I'm doing that right now. I am, in a small way, I am on all of your screens and your phones. I have bilocated my image everywhere. It just got to take that to the next stage to move into a physical body. So right now I am bilocating on your computers. The ability to move very fast. I have a friend who had powers. She once stopped time. I shared this yesterday for an hour and a half so she could get to a friend who's about to die. Um, there is a story in the Bible when Joshua commanded the sun to stop still for 36 hours and it did. And astronomers will tell you about this extraordinary period in history where the sun stopped still for 36 hours. Um, the ability to stay warm in extreme cold temperatures, suspend breathing. Some yogis would go under the earth and actually lie there in, in, in a coffin to prove this point. The ability, the ability to bestow the powers to others to activate other people. I did this with my son. I activated him. The ability to not be harmed by fire. The ability to change the weather. I've done that one as well. So there's many things that you can do. I've mentioned about remote viewing, um, where you actually get into a deep state and read the future. <clears throat> Um, Dr. Clark, um, Dr. Uh, Serge King writes about it, but talks about Dr. Adrian Clark, who went in and was meeting various cities and discovering their ability to do extraordinary miracles and powers and how they could clear energies using energy work. Um, my one I mentioned, which I'll share more next week, was mastering medication and turning it into a herb and having and doing that like on machines showing it. I use it on some medications i can tell you now were very strong ones and i was told inevitably have side effects i said they weren't with me and i had absolutely zero side effects because i turned them into herbs now of course i've moved on to cannabis gummies and various other things because i like the taste of them a lot better than i do medication not because really it would make much difference because you start to realize everything is just the one energy from the same substance and it's just how we perceived it as good or bad which was the Garden of Eden. Um, in fact, I read a very good summary of the Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve, where basically the reason Eve fell was she started believing in, in scarcity and started believing in lack. 
and started to focus on what she didn't have, which was the apple in the garden. And when she fell into scarcity, she fell on her consciousness and then Adam moved into the illusion that hard work was necessary for money. Rather than hard work, you do it because you just like working and keeping busy. But money and hard work very, very little resemblance. The cities know that. And you can see that by the fact that you just have to go down to the casino in Vegas and watch the princes of Saudi Arabia walking in and betting $25,000 chips with a harem of 10 women doing no work whatsoever. So work is something that you do just to contribute and have inner joy. So this is another thing the city knows, that hard work is something you do because you love doing it. You like to serve your clients. I work hard because if I don't, I get up to mischief. That's why I work hard. Not because I know it has an awful lot to do with money. Yes, it does help, but I'm better off to put my mind and work hard on that. Studies have found that if you get your mind into the right state, you know, you can get the same results practicing piano in your mind for 30 minutes as doing it there. So these are some examples, you know. I can remember at the Wynn Hotel, it was well known every day we would wait for 45 minutes or more in the buffet line. It was so popular. And I remember whinging about it. And my son, William, challenged me. He goes, well, if we know city powers, surely we can make the line um, disappear. I said, I don't. I said, no, it doesn't quite work like that. He goes, really? You're saying that you doubt it? And I said, okay. I said, well, let's just believe that the buffet line will be five minutes tomorrow. We got there, we waited exactly five minutes and we're in. And I was in shock. So I've never seen that at the win. And I don't know if anyone here has been to Vegas, but you'll know what I mean. In peak period. So then I said, okay, well, why don't we do tomorrow no queue? So we got to the win buffet. And as we got there, we could see some people there. And we thought, okay. But as we started to walk towards it, they got taken through. And then another person took them through. And as we actually reached the cash register, a lady walked up to us and said, hi, we'd like to come through. And it was weird to shook our heads. So whenever I start to get bad traffic and bad runs, I just look at what I'm imagining and what I'm saying. And usually it's road rage stuff. And I'm deserving what I'm creating. Because the universe gives you exactly what you fucking deserve. And the cities know that. I have made speeding fines disappear. I remember one time being pulled over by a cop. And, the, and I'm giving personal examples, not to gloat, but to show you I'm not just speaking from a book I've read. This is stuff I've done myself, lived it. Helped the client make a bank debt literally disappear and vanish where the bank rang her and they just waived it without her even applying for it. Um, I had a cop pull me over and was going to give me a fine. I did some work to raise the computer. He came back to me using some energy work and, he, and I had 42 speeding fines on the system. He said, well, the system shows you've actually got a clean record. I'm going to let you off. And I could be keeping you here for hours on doing this. And in the event, we will be doing that in over the coming weeks. But there's a lot you can do. And I'm hopefully you're seeing that you can use it for practical. I've used it to make tax orders disappear as well and make tax orders get resolved, but really should never have been resolved in a million years where I've had my lawyer shaking her head in astonishment. So who's now getting a little bit excited by the concept of learning more and mastering the city powers? If you're not, you probably should go and watch Netflix now. But I'm sure you are or you wouldn't be here. And like I said, absolutely doing this for no other reason than to, and Williams here I've noticed, so William would be remembering about the win and how we were doing that at the win and having time of our life. So what we're going to do now before we finish is activate. <coughs> so just, I'm going to turn off the camera, just focus your eye on the center of the code, your, your, put all your mental energy in the center of your head. Oh, actually, if you haven't got water, grab some water. So, just focus your mental energies in the center of your head. Breathe in the nose for four. Hold for two. And breathe out of your mouth for four. And as you're focusing on the center of the code and you're letting your breathing you'll notice you're starting to relax and starting to fade out and feel.
moving into the nose for four, hold for a few, and out for four. And this is a, a manifestation code. So activating the manifestation code of R in each and everyone's third eye on all levels, all dimensions now. Calling in the Archangels, Gabriel, Uriel, Michael, Raphael, Archangel Metatron. It is commanded by the laws of the golden liquid realms and the chemical powers that the city activation manifestation master code is used to activate the first layer of city powers on each people for the highest available capacity on all levels, all dimensions, all incarnations now. Aham Brahmasmi. Om Kriya Babaji Nama Om. Eli Jatef. I am this I am Ta Asia Interdoy. And just feel it going the absorbing right into your consciousness. And just feel it going right through. I can feel it going right through people's third eyes, right through the heart, right through the heart chakra, right down through all seven chakras and putting them on the correct spin and the correct frequency. And I'm just doing that for each of you right now. Okay. Just get a sip of water and just share what you felt. So just share what you felt. A bit of lightheadedness. Yep. Tired, grounded, centered. If you're tired, that's good. It means you probably are clearing and processing. The main thing is to not overthink it and just notice what starts to come up over the coming days. Um, you may just have a little bit more insight on things than you had previously. You might start to just get senses or things. So it's a powerful code. This You might just start to notice your, your talking is changing. The things you're speaking out are happening. That your powers of precognition are starting to take up. You're just getting a, a, def, a, a better sense. Like I, I have a very clear sense right now of my year and what to hit this year for the world. And you're going to get more insight. Judith drawn into the code. Yep, that's good, Judith. You're pretty experienced at this now, so that's good. Josh and Rach, connection to self. Anyone else? So who here is going to come next week? We're going to be doing this again next week, and we're going to be going into it a bit more. Franco, rotating between my eyes, heat around my third eye. Excellent. So, yeah, come next week and invite people to come. Because we're going to be continuing on, but going into a bit more depth on the things we brushed over today. I just wanted to give you a sneak preview. Who here is interested in coming to either the physical event in Perth for two days or the online event? And just write in the text, either physical or 
to the online. The online will just be a kind of obviously lesser version of it, but the physical one. Awesome. Quite a few online, physical, online. Brilliant. Okay. So we will let you know the online one. Yep. Some of you in UK and Switzerland and various other things. Some of you physical. Yeah, no, this excites me. Um, I'm I'm telling you, you get enough people in these powers, we can do we can bring some profound change in the planet and for people around us. And what we'll be teaching, what I'll share in, in this event, that's different to a lot, I'm going to really be focusing about practical. How do you apply it in your business? How do you apply it with your family? How do you apply it to a better relationship with your kids, with your parent, with your... How do you step better into your roles? How do you use it um, for healing people in your life? How can you use it for vaccines and energies around you affecting you? How can you use it for mental health? Especially mental health, because... Who here has noticed that mental health and just generally stress has been a bigger factor over the last year or two since COVID? Just raise your hand if you've noticed that. Yeah, I, I, I will raise my hand right up high. So this is going to be a big focus of it as well. So you can take mastery over your mind and mental health, absolute authority. You take back control over your life and give the government the middle finger, as one would say. So, Awesome. So if you're particularly interested in the online or whatever else, what would be really good is just to put your um, details in the chat, just your email or whatever. Some of you I, I know. Um, if the team could just take notes of, of people. But if you could put your email down or whatever else, it would just be helpful. Or So, yeah, I'll get my team to be taking this uh, the details down. Yep, great. Some of you already know it. Well, the online event, there will be a sneak preview. I mean, these events are free, but the actual online one, you know, you'll be getting information on it and, and we'll be throwing the prices or whatever else. The physical one's on the 3rd and 4th of March, 2nd to 4th of March. Um, the online one is to be announced. So it's more just an expression of interest if you're particularly curious and keen to come. So, yep, I'll be giving more details next week. So next week, you're going to get full details of the online event. Um, and I'll be emailing you in the meantime about the online event for those of you who give the details. And then next week, we'll be sharing a little bit more about it and going into it and how this all works. And then also the physical event as well. So, okay, everyone. Well, thank you for coming today. Who really, really, really enjoyed this? Like who's kind of had a bit of a, um, had a lot more people come than I expected, actually. So we didn't kind of promote this too heavily. So it's obviously a topic of interest. Very exciting. One little tip I'll give you. Yeah, thanks, Andreas. Enjoyed it. You're good to see you. Um, is that um, you'll save money, I can assure you. You will save money and a whole lot of stuff with what you're going to learn. So whatever you actually pay you're going to save and you're going to manifest the money and you will save money on your supplements and everything. I can assure you. So, okay, everyone. Well, thank you very much. I'm going to jump off now, leave my team to take the details and I'll see you all um, next week. And in the meantime, you'll be seeing more of me doing webinars to keep myself out of mischief, by the way. So if you see little sneak preview, um, you will um, basically, you will know I'm just keeping out of mischief by, doing as many webinars as I can. Okay, everyone. Well, thanks very much. And I will see you all next week. Bye for now and before.